Hey friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting. And in this video, I want to talk about graphics and computer requirements for 3D visualization in stage lighting, okay? This month here on Learn Stage Lighting uh, on the YouTube channel, it's Visualizer Month. And I've been excited to start to take a look at, you know, from basics. Okay, what does a visualizer do? How do we, how does it work? Is it right for you? I've, I've answered that stuff in the playlist already um, for this month. But now I want to talk about computer performance because there are really two types of people that I talk to when somebody's picking out a visualizer. The first person, they come in and they say, oh man, if I'm going to do 3D visualization, I know I need the beefiest computer I can get. So I'm going to go spend three grand on this sick gaming computer and it's going to be amazing. It is, but you might not need that. And then the other person goes, Hey, I've got this, you know, five-year-old computer. It's not bad. It gets struggles along sometimes. Oh, it's a laptop, by the way, it's a netbook. And, um, but it'll work fine for visualization, right? Maybe not so much. If there's one thing that confuses people more than anything else with visualizers, it's this, it's system requirements. For example, if I go in here and I look at the system requirements for capture, which is the visualizer I've used for quite some time, um, they actually don't have any, they, they let you know the maximum, the minimum, uh, windows or Mac requirements. And that's something I want to talk about in a minute. Um, but they really don't in any of their documentation there is a little bit on support about graphics but they don't really give minimum hardware requirements l8 another one that i'm focusing on this month doesn't give minimum hardware requirements here depends too um it does not it does it's sorry it does give minimum system requirements but they're rather vague okay so how do you know if you have enough computer to visualize or not? Well, the thing with visualizers is the first and foremost thing is it's all about the graphics. It really is. I've personally run and I've watched students of mine run visualizers on pretty old computers and it can be done. Sometimes it might lag a little while you're moving things around and stuff, but when it comes to the actual visualization part of visualizing, it's literally all in the graphics card. If you take a, you know, a three to four year old mid spec computer and put a slamming graphics card in it, you'll get great results with the visualizer. That would be better than buying a new computer with no graphics card or a really entry level graphics card. Okay. And so this is where visualizers get interesting and they kind of become a loaded question because there truly is not a lot of good documentation out there as to what constitutes a good graphics card and what doesn't. And it really, really depends in most of these visualizers on how many light sources you plan to have and what level of detail you would like to visualize that. Because when it comes to working with these and when it comes to visualizing, the visualizers themselves are able to clamp down on that level of detail or clamp down on the frame rate. And if they turn those both down, you can visualize a lot of stuff. Okay. Or you could turn up the detail, turn down the frame rate, turn up the frame rate, turn down the detail, or just have the best graphics card on the block and see it all. So it's tough to come up with an answer, but here I want to give you just some really good benchmarks that'll help you. Okay. So say you're out there, you're visualizing one to two universes of lights. Now, again, this is almost misleading because one universe of lights could be 512 lights, right? If they're all dimmers and that's a lot of light sources to visualize. It could also be one light if it's a moving head with a lot of pixel mapping. And, and technically if it has pixel mapping, then sources wise, it's got, you know, 20 sources, right? But that's still a lot different than 512. You see where I'm getting here? And so this is why these visualizer companies have a really hard time. But I would say if you're doing small to mid-sized stages, you know, you're not doing huge stuff, then go out there and in today's dollars, you know, buy, have a reasonable computer and buy a $150 graphics card, 150 to $200. Okay. 
Me personally, the one that I'm using is a GTX 1050 Ti that's by NVIDIA. I bought it probably three years ago. Um, because of the way prices have gone over the last year, it's still about the same cost, I believe, as when I bought it, which is, let's find out, which is about $159, okay? And it's a solid graphics card. There's newer, nicer stuff out now, okay? Um, and the truth is, it really just is a testing thing. Um, but it's not like, say you buy the same card I have, this 1050 Ti, this is the card I have right now. It's not like, you know, the, the program's going to look at you and be like, okay, you can't visualize this. You don't have enough stuff. It's just, it might lag at times, especially if you make quick changes or you start strobing everything or turn everything on at once. It can slow down. It can lag a little. Okay. That's when you know, okay, I might need to upgrade. And thankfully the used market for graphics cards is really good. All right. Um, if you do have any doubt, you know, one of the things that's interesting here as well, too, that I think I should point out is that um, when we talk about graphics performance of these visualizers, in the past three, four years, I have seen all of them get better, get more efficient, be able to get better results out of the same graphics processors. And that's darn cool. They've gotten more efficient in that way. Um, the last thing to note when we're talking about computers for visualization is the age old question. Do you want to be the hipster cool Mac person or the lame PC person? Well, if you didn't know yet, I'm recording this on a quote lame PC. And truth be told, you know, my opinion is that Apple's heyday is gone, that they're not, you know, the best computers for creative people anymore. Um, and that Windows has really stepped up the game, you know, and the PC manufacturers, like there's good stuff out there. You know, don't buy cheapo PCs. Um, there's a lot more range. Like with Macs, you know, if you buy a Mac from Apple, like the hardware is going to be good quality because that's a promise they make with PCs. There's a lot of people buying, building really cheap ones. And there's people that have different levels, right? you get the big names out there like Dell, HP, Lenovo. And those guys, they all have really low end stuff and they all have really high end stuff. Okay. And I shoot for the middle, you know? Um, and when, so when you talk about Mac versus PC, you know, I've been one back over to PC myself. A lot of people I know have, but not all my friends. I get Mac user friends. Um, but if you are going to use a Mac, then Capture and Camsys Magic Viz, which is a free visualizer. It's not high quality, um, but it's free. Um, those two are really your options. Um, Depends and LA do not run on Macs. Um, and honestly, like if you're buying a computer to visualize anyways, or if you're buying a computer that's mainly going to visualize, then why not go with something that's much easily, much more easily upgradable? Then we'll talk about PC um, desktop versus laptop. Okay. Um, dollar for dollar, a desktop with a really good graphics card or with a decent one is going to be way less expensive than a laptop, right? Because trying to cram a graphics card into a laptop costs more. And also you're not going to be able to change it out later. So that's something to think of as well. Of course, laptops are great. Laptops are cool. You can carry them with you, but the downside is the, the lack of upgradability. Awesome. So hopefully you've learned something here about visualizers, about what it takes to run one on a computer. Obviously, there are no set in stone answers here, but you should be able to, from this video to get a better idea of what to look for. Be sure if you're interested in more, check out my tutorials on visualizers within Learn Stage Lighting Labs. We've got a link here and be sure to subscribe here. And then we will see you in our next few videos where we're going to dive in to those visualizers we've been talking about and start looking at individual products, looking at software A versus B versus C versus D and really breaking it down for you so you can decide what's best for you. I'll see you guys there. Thanks.